In the last video, I said that this video would be all about texturing. Well, it's actually not. This video is all about design and coming up with Rocket Randy. In this video, I want to show you some of the things I went through while conceptualizing the Rocket Randy character. When starting, I realized I didn't want him to have a standard eight head size. I didn't want him to be heroic or look really anatomically correct. I still wanted him to have a cartoony quality. So I didn't start with any fields or any guides or anything like that. I just kind of started drawing. I wanted him to feel a little bit loose. It didn't have to be really exact. So just using some of some of my basic understanding of anatomy, I started throwing this armature together that I would then use to actually hang the rest of the character on. The reason I'm starting with a profile drawing is because the predominant positions I usually use with the character puppet and after effects, at least for a lot of the projects I've done, is a side front and a front three quarters. For this character, I didn't really do any thumbnailing or create any interesting drawings. He was really directed to become a puppet. So with that in mind, I start with the profile because it's really important that the profile puppet and the front three quarters really look good and read well. So having a compelling figure is really necessary. Here I'm just fleshing out some of his forms, playing with his body a bit, playing with the idea that he might have some boots on and a bit of a jumpsuit. This is sort of a Star Trek looking outfit at the moment, but it will evolve as things go on. I usually don't go too crazy in refining the details at this stage unless I have a client who is specifically needs to approve all of this. So now I'm just adding some of his basic costume. You might have seen me earlier increase the size of his head. I found his head was a bit too small and looking a little bit too realistic anatomically. So I decided to increase it to make him a bit more cartoony. Now at this stage, I'm really not happy with the character's design. In fact, I'm kind of freaking out thinking that I might have the wrong idea in general. So I added the rocket pack anyway, just to see if it helped at all. And I think what I came down to was the fact that his back is too straight and he's not, um, he's not droopy enough. I, I didn't want him to seem really confident like he'd invented this thing and he was really confident this thing would work. I wanted him to feel sort of like this lazy guy who came across this technology and put on the most rudimentary basic protection thinking this was going to work. He's not a superhero. He's not a really smart person in any way. He's just sort of a dweeb who found a rocket pack and is going to try flying it around. I think that's a general idea here. And with his back so straight, I just wasn't feeling it. So with some idea of the character that I wanted, I decided I would do a profile close-up study of his head and try to find a little bit more of the character that way. And here I'm just starting with the two circles. One of my common mistakes is actually not making the back of the skull far enough behind the ear. I tend to make it a little bit too shallow. So I've been using that trick to try to keep things scaled properly, but it doesn't always work. Here I'm actually just sculpting the character out as I go, jumping all over the place, kind of playing with what I'm interested in and what I feel needs to be developed. I feel like at this point I've defined the eyes enough and I can start putting on some of the goggles. And as you can see, he has a bit of a smug look on his face. This kind of plays into that character that's not really a likable hero in any way, or not even a hero at all. And um, I just continued to flesh him out as I went. Now, I am drawing on a canvas pattern that is really just an adjustment layer. So I created, so I went online and downloaded a whole bunch of free patterns and found a couple I liked. So I created the so I created the cat pattern canvas as an adjustment layer and then just added a new folder that had a color burn transfer mode set to it. And inside of it, it's just a whole bunch of normal layers that I'm painting with different shades of gray or white on to actually draw this character. I really like working this way because I just, for some reason, I respond better to it. When I try to work on a gray or white canvas, I feel less inspired and less excited about the process. So this method works really well for me. It feels a little bit more natural and combined with my more natural brushes that move fast, I usually enjoy the experience. Now at this point I've jumped the gun a little bit and realized that this painting isn't finished yet. The back of his skull is definitely too shallow. And so I'm just going through trying to experiment with some ways to expand it out. And I actually ended up just having to redraw it. At this point, I actually like the way the Rocket Randy characters turned out and decided to finish it up with some lighting. I almost think that it would be really awesome to see a Rocket Randy character puppet looking a lot more like this. 
But the only problem with doing a character like this is it's a lot more work because it's a lot more realistic. The problem with a really realistic looking character is that the unconscious expectation of the audience is that it moves more realistically, which can be a tremendous amount of work. If the character is paper cutout looking or very directly stylized, I think the expectations of the audience lean less towards realism and they accept the reality you lay before them. So the character can move more roughly, it can be a little less refined, a little more mechanical, and you can actually get away with it. If he's really nicely rendered and quite realistic, the expectations go through the roof and therefore you're going to be animating for a long time to get all the subtlety of motion in there that make this thing work. Now after I've done all that work with the actual character, I've just drawn a really quick rough white outline of Rocket Randy. I experimented with some other things, played around with what he'd be wearing a little bit, and just made a really rough drawing of him. And once I decided it was pretty locked down, I started creating these lines here, just using the line tool in Photoshop, and just started duplicating them out. You can just duplicate the layer by alt dragging it. And I'm trying to create markers at some pretty significant parts of his body, like his nose, mouth, chin, the upper and bottom part of his eyes, the top of his head. And I'm just doing this so that I can start creating a front version of the character. After all of my reference lines are completed, I merge them all together, stretch them across the screen, select my brush again, and start trying to draw the new Rocket Randy from the front. I don't always find that coming up with a front puppet is as easy as the side. It doesn't always work that the side forms the front. There's a lot of different things going on. The face can be quite different. But at this point, I'm really just focusing on keeping the proportions right, even though right now this head is far too wide. I can always squash it a little bit later. I just want to keep moving and try to get a sense of what this character looks like from the front. And currently, I think he's too wide, but I'm just going to keep working through it. It's really sketchy. I'm not really making confident strokes here because, again, I'm just trying to find him and work through the process. It can be really difficult to match everything up. It can be actually one of the most time-consuming things is to make the different puppets look right. And even at this stage, there's a lot of room for error, and it can still take a long time, even though you're moving quite quickly. Now, those legs are way too bent. He, it looks like he's got some crazy hips there. But this is really more for example, and I don't think I'll be sticking with this puppet anyways. But essentially, that is the concept with the front guy. So after I've drawn these really rough outlines, my next step is to refine certain elements of the profile puppet, which is my strongest puppet. Like I pick the strongest one and start to refine that because that will inform the next puppet. So I'm trying to work with what I've made and define the character's face a little more based on the concept sketch that I did earlier. In this sketch, I'm trying to keep the character less realistic and a lot more simple. I'm trying to do one to two strokes. I'm trying to stay away from too many sketchy lines and just move with a little more confidence. I've now drawn this character a few times. I have a better sense of where he's going, but the process now is really just cleaner lines and simplification. I'm still adding some shading as I go, which I like to do. It just makes me feel more confident about the actual character. And then I just continue to flesh them out. This process will go on for a while as I actually draw the puppet and refine it. And at this stage, I may even go back in and redo a white outline of the front character based on the new visual information I've acquired from refining the profile. But usually I would do the face first and then I would move to the front puppet before doing the whole thing. I kind of jump back and forth constantly based on what I'm more interested on. Also, I may discover that something is just not working and actually will require a redesign. So I don't want to get through the whole puppet and refine one and realize it's not going to work in another. So essentially this process continues for a while until I have a convincing front side and front three quarter puppet or as many as I need and I just really refine these essentially white drawings and then I go through and start to sketch it out. I'm not going to go into my whole process of drawing out the character and show you it because it just takes too long. There's a lot of experimentation and a lot of playing around trying to get things to look right. 
I just want to jump in right now and give you the heads up on a couple of things to consider when you're actually designing a puppet for After Effects, be it a segmented puppet or a puppet that you intend on using the puppet tool with. For those of you who are not familiar with the puppet tool in After Effects and even in Photoshop, there's a tool called the puppet tool, which where you can take singular pieces or a single layer like this here and actually do a warp on it using these pins, you can create joints and actually bend the limb. Uh, this It doesn't look very good in Photoshop because the bends are very soft. In After Effects, you can make these bends a lot sharper. It used to be you have had to segment everything. So like in this character here, all the joints are actually segmented out. Just, so I've got these multiple segments sitting on top of each other with circles up at the joints here so that I can rotate them to achieve a bend in the arm without revealing too much that it's a cutout character. These two processes are very important to consider when you're actually designing your character. Is it going to be a puppet tool character or is it going to be segmented? Do you want some segmented pieces? I find the puppet tool is not a solve all solution to animating a character. Oftentimes I find the need to combine both segmented and non-segmented pieces together. Even in this version here, which is the entire layout of the character for use with the puppet tool, I still have segments. I have segments here at the hips, like right here there's, I'm just going to turn on auto select. Here at the actual hips there's this thing here, which is part of his shirt. And this is like a separate layer of fabric that would move at a different speed than the upper part of his shirt. I wanted to have the control over that. And then I've got this belt layer here which I've created that just sort of looks like R2-D2's head, but that's his actual belt. And then I have the legs and the boots. And I separate the legs and the boots because I actually want the, the boot to move a little bit around the leg. So you need to think about these things when you're actually making your puppet and you're deciding how you want it layered. If I were to make the leg and the boot all one piece, it would still work, but it would have a very obvious limitation to it. Even with the puppet tool character, I still keep the hands separated because I actually want to control which hands I show because I want, might want to be able to swatch, swap out for different hands. Plus, I want that hand to be able to rotate separate from the actual fabric on the wrist. So I want to have those interacting a little more dynamically. With the neck, the neck's always a little bit tricky, especially for the three quarters because right now when we look at this three quarter torso piece, it's all one drawing. Eventually, in After Effects, I'll have to separate this into multiple layers. And I actually did find that I had to add a couple of pieces too. Um, this is covered in some later tutorials, but in the character, I had to build a collar and a sweater piece here that I actually ended up having to insert into this cut torso so that the actual neck would work. So there's things that even I don't remember or don't realize I need to consider while building the characters. I have tons of layers on this character. The torso is separate. The buckle on the belt is separate from the actual belt itself. So we can look at, if we look at the actual belt, it's built like this. Now the only reason I can build this all in one piece is because I am planning on using the puppet tool, a pin there and a pin on the back and a pin up at the top here. The cushion is separate. So there's a, there's a cushion here that I'm putting on the rockets and there's actually the two rocket pieces. And then there's all these different components here. Each one of these are sketched out and drawn, and then I create textures underneath them. We're going to get into how to texture them in another lesson, but for now I'm just telling you all the different layers and things you need to consider. I think the thing that's so helpful about having these kind of videos is that you can go through the process with me before you really start, and you can see a lot of the problems we run into, and you can see why you need to consider some of these things, because they just won't make sense until you're actually in the trenches and working with the puppet. For the puppet's segmented limbs, I'm just going to show you really quickly how they work and actually even how I set them up. So I initially started with the full limbs. I did not draw them as segmented. I went in after, before I flattened anything and they were just drawings, I went in after and actually segmented these guys up. If you are considering doing a segmented puppet version, it is just important to consider how the limbs will bend. Right here, if we take this layer and turn it a little more transparent, you can see that I've considered where the arm is going to bend from, which is about here. And then as the arm rotates, what's that going to look like when it rotates? So it's really important to experiment with that because it also helps me decide where to push my, draw my lines. Now the joints, it's really important to have sort of a circular overlap to them. So if I put this down to 50%, 
actually if I put them both to 50% you can see the area where they overlap and you can actually choose how you want them to overlap so that there's more of a circular pattern here and I actually find that I'll draw them with that circle there I might even like create a little shape here I think I have one from when I was putting this guy together I actually went through and would create circles before I cut things up so if you see here I created these circles where I thought the joints needed to be and then I drew on top of the existing leg accordingly accordingly and cut it out that way so these legs and arms were actually pulled directly from this single layered puppet where I was just using one layer for the leg and the arms and then what I did is I added these little circles to see where they needed to bend these circles actually helped me define where the best the best way to cut out the leg so that my knee doesn't collapse on me so you can see when I'm bending this character the knee isn't actually collapsing because I've considered I've created a circular pattern that I can then create my cutouts around so if we take a look at this leg and make it 50% opaque and let's see maybe we'll just turn off these circles you can see that I followed the cutout shape of that circle and therefore when my knee bends it tracks a lot better so let's just bend that knee as long as I put the anchor point in the right spot so I put the anchor point roughly in the middle it doesn't have to be perfect you can see that I'm not losing the volume of the knee if for instance you didn't do that and you had your puppet segmented like this it can still work but sometimes what happens is you lose the volume of the knee I actually find you can create joints like this and sometimes they even work better because um, they can create sort of the look of a kneecap. It's really important to experiment and figure out how you're going to do this inside of Photoshop before you get into After Effects and realize you took the wrong approach. I find that sometimes creating these perfectly round joints doesn't create very interesting joints. It creates soft looking joints. As for the actual upper torso and stuff, I eventually segment these and we'll go into the process of chopping those up later. But I did just want to get into the actual design and drawing more than anything. And the facts that you do need to consider where you're going with your puppet. And unfortunately, there's no formula for that. There's actually just purely experimentation and understanding the process, which I hope you will get a pretty firm grasp of while we go through this series. All right, so in the next video, I will actually, for real this time, be going through the texturing of the Rocket Randy character. I will also be doing a little section on how you can use photographs to texture your characters as well, even though this isn't something I actually use in the final Rocket Randy puppet. If you like what ED Films is doing and want to stay up to date on the latest developments and tutorials, please show your support by liking us on Facebook.